Good afternoon, everybody. All right, I had to adjust the height. My goodness. So. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm Kim Mizia, Program Director for the Northwest Region. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the March 2020 Hearing Dog graduation. Over the past two weeks, the five students you're about to meet have worked tirelessly to get to this point here today. Thank you so much for joining us to celebrate their success and the beginning of these new assistance dog partnerships. The unique and very special thing about a hearing dog compared to our other placement categories is that the dog is a more independent thinker. Hearing dogs must first hear and acknowledge the sounds that they've been trained for and then make a conscious decision to alert their handler. This responsibility is tremendous and must occur despite distractions, which is no easy feat for a dog. It's this choice to stop everything else and alert the handler that is the magic of a hearing dog, which only grows wider and deeper as the bond between handler and dog develops. However, that magic would not be possible without the dedication and support of each person in this room. To our volunteers, donors, board members, staff, and clients, thank you for being such an important part of the Canine Companions mission. I know I speak for many when I say that I'm so excited to watch the hearing dog magic unfold as we send these five new teams off into their lives together. Without further ado, let's get to know them a little bit and please enjoy their uh, team training video.
Well, hello, my fellow machine parts. My name is Ken, and I welcome all of you cogs, wheels, and levers here and on our, our live stream. Canine Companions is one large machine, not a loud, smelly, clunky machine, but one that whirs, purrs, and shines. When you put money, time, commitment, love, and other raw materials in the machine, it produces beautiful things. I'm proud to be a cog in this machine. Occasionally, I need a bit of lubricant, sometimes an adjustment, and once in a while, a smack with a big hammer. My job is to take the work of the other cogs, wheels, and levers and help create our beautiful products. Today, we are making the final assembly on our latest widgets, and they are beautiful. Let me introduce you to them. I'm so honored to start with Penny. Penny started her relationship with Canine Companions back in 1993 when she became a puppy raiser. Over the next 13 years, she raised 11 dogs for Canine Companions. During that time, her hearing loss became more pronounced, and she realized that she needed additional help. So in November of 2007, she was placed with her first hearing dog, Capria. They had a long and happy relationship until Capria unfortunately passed. Penny is now back for a successor hearing dog. All of our students tend to become more relaxed as they get to know the new dog that they've been placed with. However, the change in Penny's demeanor was so dramatic and radiant that it was obvious that her new dog has helped to fill a big hole in her heart. The dog that has made that change is Hartley III. One of Hartley's nicknames during her professional training was Hartley So Smartly because of her extraordinary intelligence. Penny, would you like to join me up front? <laughs> Presenting Hartley to Penny is her puppy raiser, Glenn Kurokawa of San Jose, California. And he has raised six puppies for Canine Companions. You ready to give her up, Glenn? <laughs> we have a certificate for you. Congratulations, Penny. Next, let me introduce you to Maria. <laughs> Maria is married and is the mother of two small children. She's an anthropologist and works on projects related to climate change. Up until now, she has been relying on her family, friends, and coworkers to help her be aware of the things she can't hear. She is looking forward to changing that. She wants to particularly alleviate some of the responsibility that her family has had to alert her to the things she misses. Now that task is taken on by her new hearing dog. Carolyn is that dog. She is the very picture of alert. She is always aware of what is going on and does not allow herself to become, become distracted. Maria, would you join me up front? Carolyn was raised by Carrie Casey Bosarth from Bozeman, Montana. 
She could not be here today, so presenting Carolyn to Maria is the breeder caretaker of Carolyn's mother, Jenny Han. Congratulations, Maria and Carolyn. <laughs> Let me announce the next team that our machine has created. Patricia attended this class with the support of her husband, Bradford, who is himself a service dog graduate with his dog, Keegan. Commonly, our society does not view hearing loss as a real disability. As such, some people who are hard of hearing hide the difficulties that they deal with constantly. Sometimes taking the step to get an ass the assistance of a hearing dog can have a positive effect on a person's sense of themselves. In Patricia's words, already I have begun to accept being deaf and not ashamed of it. Patricia and Bradford are like many young couples and would like to start a family together. One of the things that Patricia will want her hearing dog to do is to alert her to the sound of babies crying. The dog who will be helping her with this is Parasol II. Patricia, would you join me up front? Parasol is so sweet, I almost regret having to see her go, but I am thrilled for Patricia. Parasol was raised by an inmate at the California Health Care Facility. Presenting her on his behalf is the coordinator of the program, Tina Morones, and the co-puppy raiser, Peter Carlino. Congratulations, Patricia and Parasol. The next human half of our newly created hearing dog teams is Rod. Rod has been supported throughout the class by his wife, Teresa. Rod is a small business owner and will be assisted by his new partner at home and during his work. A canine companion's assistance dog helps more than just the individual they are matched with. One of the benefits, or often the benefits, extend to the family as well. As Rod says of how he adapts to his hearing loss, Although one of the changes I've made is to be more focused and aware of my surroundings, I believe that I will now be able to rely on my hearing dog to notify me of things I can no longer hear. Most importantly, I hope this will give my wife some peace of mind since my hearing loss has made her life difficult too. Rod, would you join me up front? We have a dog who can more than help both of you. Turf is big enough for the two of you, for sure. And I'm referring to his heart, not his physical size. Turf is being presented to Rod by his puppy raiser, Ray Lynn Phillips, from Kingsman, Ohio.
Congratulations, Rod and Turk. And the final one of our shiny new widgets to roll off the assembly line today begins with Addy. <laughs> Addy is married and has three children. She is a high school Spanish teacher and an avid soccer player. She is looking for, among other things, help in her classroom when her students try to get her attention. Like Maria, she is also hoping to remove some of the responsibility that her children have carried to alert her um, to the things that she misses. In her words, having a hearing dog will probably make my disability less of a burden on those around me and also give me more confidence to be a part of the community that I was part of and do not want to lose. Addie, welcome to a new community. Addie's teammate, both on the soccer field and off, is going to be Vessi. Vessi is known for having the most soulful eyes that she can merely melt hearts with a simple glance. She was raised by Susan Brickley from Brookings, Oregon. She was not able to attend today, and so presenting Bessie to Addie is Bessie, Bessie's mother's breeder caretaker, Chris Kittredge. Congratulations, Addie and Betsy. And now we'll see if Addie can handle just one more thing. <laughs> She has been chosen by her classmates to represent the class as the class speaker. Uh, first, we want to thank everybody here, to everyone who has donated time or money or who has made their, it their life profession to be a part of this. We, we're all right here, we're overwhelmed with your generosity and your care and how much work goes into just one dog. Um, and there's five dogs, so it's a lot, so thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk about our experience over the last two weeks of sharing what it's like to be lose our hearing, and then a little bit of my own personal story. Um, hearing loss is a tricky disability because you can look and feel totally normally normal and healthy, and yet there is something that excludes you from a big part of normal living. There is a world going on around you that you have to work so much harder than other people in order to give it meaning. People have a hard time remembering that you cannot hear, and they get frustrated, they think you're uncaring, or that you're just not smart. Over the last two weeks, it has been, a great, it has been great to laugh and cry with a group of similar people about our similar circumstances of losing our hearing over time. We used to go to social gatherings, but now we leave as soon as more than a few people show up. We used to talk on the phone to maintain long distance relationships, but now we just don't talk to those people anymore. We avoid restaurants when anybody is in them. We get an anxiety at work when we are in charge of a meeting or have to give a presentation. 
We used to sleep through the night, but now we wake up worried that a fire alarm is going off and we cannot hear it. We know we cannot hear someone walking up behind us, so we are always looking behind our backs, just checking, worried. Personally, I have a knack for working with loud and needy teenagers. I love being a Spanish teacher, building relationships with students and being a positive example in their lives. However, after saying what about 100,000 times or K, um, I am exhausted when it comes time to listen to my own children. I want to talk to my kids in the car on the way home from school, but I always have to tell them to wait till we get home because I cannot hear them in the car. Um, I know that having a hearing dog cannot solve all of these difficulties, but I am hoping that Vessi will take away some of the worries that, I have, been, that have been added to my plate because of later in life hearing loss. Vessi will take away my dependency on my family to hear timers or the doorbell. She will be a daily reminder to my students that there is a reason that I don't respond when they are yelling my name across the room. Hopefully her presence will give me peace of mind when I wake up randomly in the night and I'll be able to go back to sleep. I know I'm not alone in believing that my hearing dog will help me navigate some of the difficulties that I have in the hearing world. I might never enjoy going to a party with lots of people, and I will still ask a question in a meeting that's already been asked, but having Vessi around will take some of those burdens away from me and help me participate in life a little bit more. Having the hearing dog will not give us our hearing back, but we can already see that they give us confidence to navigate through some of our unique struggles as people who have hearing loss. So we thank you for these two weeks, and we thank you for helping these dogs become a part of our families. Thank you for sharing on behalf of your fellow classmates, Addie. We really appreciate hearing from you. And thank you again all for being here with us today. With that, we're going to conclude today's ceremony. I hope you all have a great weekend. And um, before we sign off, we're going to actually sign off on the live stream. So thank you to everyone who came to watch on the live stream. But we do have an extra.